Investment advisor Dick Morris, the sole proprietor of DickMorris.com. And Dick, just explain uh, that point you made about the terrifying nature of a Ron Paul win in the Iowa caucuses. Well, the first thing is that obviously, Mark, uh, Ron Paul cannot defeat Barack Obama. Um, I think the latest poll has him 15 points behind and everybody else neck and neck with Obama. Uh, if he's nominated, it's, it's, it's virtually assuring Obama a second term. The other thing that scares me about Paul is that he is really, by far, the most liberal, radical candidate of the bunch. Uh, nobody other than Ron Paul wants to dismantle our military. Nobody other than Ron Paul wants to legalize heroin. Uh, nobody other than Ron Paul uh, take, wants to repeal the Patriot Act and leave us essentially without defenses against terrorism. Uh, so and nobody other than Ron Paul is willing to acquiesce in a nuclear Iran. Nobody other than Ron Paul says that we were responsible for 9-11. <laughs> so, of course, he scares me. Now, now, every time I say that stuff about Ron Paul, I get a ton of emails saying, go back to Canada, you lousy foreigner. So I hope yeah. they think, if they find some place, I hope the Ron Paul guys uh, are willing to uh, accord you refugee status up north with, uh, with, me, with me, Dick. You know, Let, let's put you know, Ron the, Paul... The other, thing, the other thing I was just going to say about uh, Paul is that if you have a situation where Romney narrowly wins Iowa and Paul is second, and Gingrich a distant third, which the polls are now reflecting, or Paul in first place, Romney a close second, and Gingrich a distant third, you're going to have a situation very, very much like uh, 1988 and 92 in the Democratic primary, where the main candidate destroyed his main opponent and then ran against someone who couldn't possibly win and coasted to the nomination. Uh, Mike Dukakis beat Al Gore. Yeah. And and then coasted against Jesse Jackson. Bill Clinton beat Paul Sangus and then coasted against Jerry Brown. John Kerry beat uh, the, uh, John Edwards and coasted against Howard Dean. Right. And you'll create a situation where there really won't be a Gingrich-Romney primary, which is really what you need to have at this point, because Ron Paul will get in the middle of it. Now, now uh, in, in Virginia, there's only going to be uh, Romney and Ron Paul on the ballot. Everybody else is off there. Uh, Iowa is all about organization, and that's why Ron Paul looks like he could win this thing, because whatever one feels about him, his guys are certainly organized. Uh, Newt uh, got this far just on debate performance alone. At this point, that's not going to be enough to carry him further, is it? I think that's true. Uh, don't forget, Mark, he also is not on the ballot in Missouri. Uh, and while Missouri is uh, a beauty contest, it's not the don't select the delegates. It is the only primary between Florida on January 31st and some of the other primaries at the end of, uh, of, at the end of March. Missouri comes on March 6th. And uh, it really would be an opportunity for whoever loses Florida to regain momentum. Uh, but Gingrich won't be on the ballot, so it may not be possible to do that. Uh, but I think what it really reflects is that during this period, he didn't raise money and didn't build an organization. Uh, and those are real serious flaws. You know, throughout history, we've had famous leaders like Napoleon comes to mind, who Learn, who knew more about the battle than anyone else did and had wonderful insights, but then they neglected the basics like winter uniforms and, right, right. you know, transport enough horses. <laughs> and I get that feeling about Newt. I think that he had insights as to how to win this thing, fired his consultants, but then he forgot to uh, raise money or build an organization. He'll love your <laughs> comparison, though. I mean, so far he's only been comparing himself to Reagan, Thatcher, Churchill, and uh, FDR at Pearl Harbor. So at least you're keeping <laughs> in the big leagues with the Napoleon uh, uh, winter in Mos retreat from Moscow comparisons. That's excellent, excellent, uh, excellent stuff you, there. Dick. Mark, have you, have you experienced it in Iowa winter? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. Napoleon, Napoleon couldn't have stuck that for 20 minutes. Now, uh, one guy who has experienced an Iowa winter is Rick Santorum. He's practically uh, moved in yes. there, sleeping in a, a vat of ethanol every well, night. Uh, is that going to pay off for him? Because the conservative yeah, vote he, is divided between Michelle Bachman, Rick Perry, 
Rick Santorum, it, it, at some point it has to move in one direction. Is there a little bit of a, a Santorum surge going on? Yes, I think there is. Uh, I have a video on my website today, Santorum Surges. Uh, it's very interesting. In the National Tea Party Patriots primary, they call it, where they had 23,000 of their supporters vote, uh, Rom Gingrich came in first, uh, Romney second, but uh, Ron, but Santorum was a close, was third, and ran a very. I think he got 16 percent, and now in Iowa he's moved from 4 percent to 6 percent to 10 percent, moving ahead of Michelle Bachman. Uh, and, you know, in a sense, he's the only guy that's never had negatives dumped on his head. Right. Everybody else has come in for their round of shellacking. Right. And, um, and as such, maybe he is less damaged than the others. I personally think he sometimes has a Rodney Dangerfield. I don't get no respect, yeah. affect <laughs> to him. But he sure has a solid conservative record, and he certainly is articulate and capable. Can uh, Ron... So he could be an interesting uh, entry. Uh, let's just suppose that Ron Paul pulls out a win in Iowa. There is a constituency for him in New Hampshire. He is in second place there uh, in some of these polls. Uh, could he, in effect, destabilize the entire nominating process uh, and, and wind up uh, denying a plausible candidate a victory in primary season? No, uh, because everybody will close in on him if he wins in Iowa. Uh, right now, people just kind of treat him as a nut, and they're not really focused on him. But, you know, if he wins in Iowa, everybody and his uncle is going to be all over him with his past quotes, his negatives, his voting record. I mean, it's kind of hard to go out there and say that we shouldn't wiretap terrorists or to say we shouldn't be able to search their home without telling them about it. Oh. Those are the provisions in the Patriot Act he wants to repeal. Oh, Dick uh, Morris, you're in, you're in for it now. You're going to be, uh, and for once, I'm glad that the, uh, the anti-Ron Paul emails will be coming your way. Good luck fleeing. Uh, he'll be fleeing to Canada in, uh, in the next 48 hours, folks. Thanks a lot, Dick Morris.